What's up, I'm Triple Shoot. Welcome back to an improved FPS optimization guide for Deadlock. This one should have much more accurate information and of course, better tips for optimizing your Deadlock experience. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. This video is only gonna cover the in-game options. If you'd like to optimize your system for better performance, you'll find guides linked down below. Jumping straight into the game itself, open up your settings in the bottom left, followed by a video, and here's where we'll begin. If you'd like to see a full FPS breakdown and the effect of every different option here, you'll find a video linked down below. These videos do take quite a bit of time to create, so do let me know if you like that kind of thing. Starting off at the very top, the quality preset. This game, for me at least, has FPS ranging from 200 160 at the lowest to about 90 at the highest. In between each option here, I saw about a 30% difference, 30% difference, all the way down to the lowest option where we got a 60% boost in performance, but playing down this low isn't the best. The main reason for it is because of the upscaling technology over here. On every other option besides the lowest, it chooses FSR, but it switches back to Stretch as the default here. Essentially, Stretch is just rendering your game at a lower resolution and stretching it to be your full screen resolution. Anything below 100% here is going to look blurry, and the lower you go, the more dramatic this effect is. I'd recommend only playing with FSR or FSR2 for a legible game. Using the preset options above of 100%, 75%, 62 and 50% for the render quality here, throughout FSR's range of, well, 60% and above, things look pretty good. For each preset that you step down here, performance-wise, so 175, 62, 50, I saw about a 25% gain from 100 to 75, another 25 from 75 to 62, and finally an extra 15%, dropping it down to just 50 here. I'd recommend having your upscaling option as high as possible, as long as you're getting good FPS, as the game will look so much better that way. And if you have FPS left on the table, I'd recommend using FSR 2 over here and setting it to the native AA option, which should make your game look even better than default native 100% resolution. This is the best option for visual quality and clarity, but of course not everyone can afford this option. This option took my 90 FPS at the highest here down to 85-ish, so it is going to cost you a little bit, but the game looks so much better. Ultimately though, on quality and balanced, and the equivalent for FSR here instead of FSR2, the game still looks really good no matter what. So balanced and above is fantastic, and FSR, anything above about 60% is still probably more than good enough. However, I did notice some weird shimmering anti-aliasing effects that happen on FSR that aren't visible at all on FSR2, and for that reason, I can only really recommend FSR2 as the best option here. Then moving down to screen space ambient occlusion. Moving from off to low, you'll notice that shadows are added pretty much everywhere across buildings and different surfaces, and it makes the game feel a lot more alive. From off to low, you can see about a 6% FPS drop, and the same is to be said about low to medium, 6%, medium to high, 6%, all the way until high to ultra. This final jump over here will most likely cost you 19-20% to 20 of your FPS, which is a huge amount. For that reason, I can only recommend playing at high, at highest tier, or at low, at lowest tier, just so the game looks really good and gives you some good performance. Of course, you can turn this off, but the game seems to lose a lot of depth and life. There's a big visual difference between off and low, and between medium and high, and there's practically no difference moving up to ultra, so don't even worry about that high. For now, I'll leave it on low, as that's as low as I will go here. Then, a distant field ambient occlusion. Moving from off to low, I saw about a 20% FPS difference, which is pretty big, and low to high, a further drop of around 3% in FPS, but as for the difference visually, it's incredibly subtle. Maybe clouds had more shadows on buildings and things like that. Buildings made more shadows than other buildings, but ultimately, leave this off for the 20% free FPS boost. Then motion blur, this is per object motion blur, still work in progress, so things are going to improve. This isn't just blurring your entire screen as you spin around. Instead, if players run across your screen, they'll be blurred and the background won't. This effect is relatively costly, as moving it from off to on will cost you about 16% of your current performance. Usually, I play games with motion blur off for motion sickness reasons, and more than just that here, I'd recommend leaving it off for a free 16% FPS boost. Then, texture quality. This should have almost no difference on your performance, it really just depends on how much VRAM your system has. If you have 4 gigs, 
set it to low. 5 to 6, medium, and anything above 6 gigs of VRAM set this to high. This game is relatively simplistic, relatively speaking, when it comes to visual style and texture resolution, so it shouldn't be all too demanding to load if you can play on the higher options here. Then moving down to these off and on options at the very bottom, VSync definitely have this turned off no matter what, and the rest of these are a little bit more questionable. Distant Field Shadows, I saw a 12% FPS drop enabling this, and the only difference I could notice was it added shadows to distant buildings that fell all the way onto the other side of the street really. Ultimately, it's a small visual difference, and for 12% of your performance, maybe you're fine with it, but it's not too crazy if you have it off. Displacement mapping was incredibly subtle, and I could only really notice the bricks lifting a little bit on the road below me, and maybe the grate changing a little bit, but ultimately it's so subtle that this effect doesn't really have an impact, especially if you're running around and focusing on gameplay rather than visuals. While you may think such a subtle effect is free to have, this actually cost me 24% of my performance, and for that reason I cannot recommend you enable this. Post-process bloom only really added bloom to the sun shining over buildings and stuff like that. It's a pretty effect to have on, ultimately not too big at all. And performance-wise, there's practically no difference in FPS. Effect bloom has more to do with blazes and guns blooming and stuff like that, explosions, etc. Again, very little, if not no performance difference here. But if you find that your FPS is dropping in combat, this could be one of the reasons that that's happening. Ultimately, these two effects are freebies to have on. Area lights. Again, one that I could not really find a difference between in the world. As far as I understand, it has to do with beam effects, but I didn't really see a difference at all, and neither could I get a performance difference at all. If you want to have it on, that's cool and all. I didn't see a difference, and FPS-wise, there's no impact. Depth of field, your preference. There's almost no performance cost with this. And finally, MBOIT. What is MBOIT? Well, MBOIT is Moment-Based Order Independent Transparency. So that's a whole lot of words to say when a transparent object moves in front of another transparent object, or just you're looking at a transparent object with things behind it in general, you should be able to see a little bit sharper. Things should look a little bit better. It's a confusing thing. It's work in progress here. And performance-wise, there's no difference between having it off and on as well. There's very few transparent surfaces that you can see through here that cause this kind of effect to be noticeable, I suppose. That's why it's work in progress. I guess not too much has happened here. And that's it. We've run through all of the settings here for the most part. If you'd like to see a detailed breakdown of each different option here, as well as how the game looks between different options, you'll find a full breakdown linked down below. Skip through it to whatever option you want to have a look at the difference between, and you can decide for yourself what you want to have on or off to get better or worse performance. What I have here is pretty optimized performance-wise, and it should give you comparable performance to the lowest option here. So, in my case, 250-ish FPS, while still keeping the game looking as good as possible. The rest of the options here are pretty self-explanatory. I'd say always play and the native resolution here, or at least if you're using custom, your aspect ratio can be whatever it wants, but make sure your resolution matches your display, and of course, your window mode over here doesn't matter too much anyways. Between borderless and full screen, especially on newer OSs, you shouldn't notice too much of a difference anyways. A lot of these options change instantly as soon as you click them in the game. You don't even need to click apply settings in most cases, so you can freely play around with these in-game. If you enable an FPS counter, like Steam's built-in one, or of course something like River Tuner. Then at the very bottom over here, Vulcan and DirectX 11. I've got mine set to Vulcan, as I was testing that last. DirectX 11 is what you should be using, unless you're on Linux, where you may only be locked to using Vulcan. Switching from DirectX 11 to Vulcan, there's practically no visual difference anywhere in the game, especially with the graphics options here. Moving between these options, you'll see a very similar change in performance on DirectX 11 and Vulkan. The only difference is that Vulkan runs about consistently 30% slower. So just stick to DirectX 11, at least on most hardware, but yours may be slightly different. And that's it. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.